Hello friends, just a short video this week. It's time for a little Look, I just have a few things I want to say this morning. First and foremost, I want to be sure everyone knows how welcome they are uh, at worship on Sunday as we continue to mourn and grieve and try to come to terms with the horrible shooting in Orlando of 49 LGBTQ people at a nightclub. We know that many people who weren't able to be with us last Sunday may well be with us this Sunday. We did pray and talk about it in the sermon last week. But we'll come back to these issues again this week as we seek to come to terms with it. So if you want to be with us, we certainly welcome and invite you uh, to a time where we mutually move through this difficult time together. You know, I've been thinking a lot this week about how unsafe so many people in our society feel. It's very clear that the LGBTQ community feels a little less safe today than they did last week. Today, however, also is the one-year anniversary of the shooting at the Mother Emanuel Church in Charleston, South Carolina. In fact, I've just come back from a remembrance of that event down at Thanksgiving Square in Dallas. Many faith leaders gathered together just now at Thanksgiving Square to pray prayers, to hear sermons, to remember and solemnize that difficult and challenging event that horrible event that happened to nine African Americans in their church last year. And what it reminds me of is how unsafe so many people feel today. African Americans can feel unsafe in their own churches. LGBTQ people can feel safe in bars, the one place they thought they were safe from the world. And Muslims, ordinary, average, law-abiding Muslims, your Muslim brothers and sisters who are your neighbors, they feel a little less safe today. So it seems to me that, especially faith leaders, we have an important role to play. It seems to me that it's our job, that it's incumbent on us in all that we say and all that we do, to not only decry violence, but to make sure that people feel safe. I want to be sure everybody understands that those are two different things. It's one thing for a faith leader to decry violence against LGBT people, against African Americans in their church. Of course we do that. Thank God we do that. But it's still another move for faith leaders to say, you LGBTQ people, you are God's good children. So let me say it right now. You LGBTQ people, you are God's good children. We love you. We are so honored and pleased to have you in our church. As baptized Christians, you work right alongside of us and chair our committees and share in the work of ministry here at this place, North Haven Church. And of course you do in so many other churches too, and we are blessed by your presence and we learn from you every day. So whatever else you are hearing this week to my LGBTQ friends, hear this. God loves you, and we love you. Now, my point is that we need a lot of religious leaders to say what I just said. We need a lot of religious leaders in their sermons on Sunday to not only decry violence, to not only stand up to hateful rhetoric and hateful speech and hateful thought. Yes, all of those things. We should. But we desperately need religious leaders to say, without equivocation and without hesitation, you, our gay friends, our lesbian friends, our bisexual and transgendered friends, you are God's good children, and God loves you, and we love you. And finally, as we move through this time of mourning, it's going to be time for us to act. It's going to be time for us to not just say good words, comforting words, but to back them up in what we do. In our theology, not only our theology of words, but our theology of practice. It's time for us to actively show our love for this community, the LGBTQ community, because this week they don't feel safe. It's incumbent upon us to make them feel safe again. So please, preachers, 
leaders, teachers, Bible study leaders, people in the church everywhere, people of all faiths, really, decry the violence, but also speak an unequivocal word of support for LGBTQ people, for their goodness, for the way that they are loved just as they are by God our Creator. You know, when I was a kid, I grew up in this very neighborhood back here, Preston Hollow. And when I was a kid, we had these signs that were in the windows of houses. It looked just like this picture here, a helping hand sign. And what that program was, was a program where we kids were told this, if you're ever in trouble, if there's ever a time you don't feel safe, run to that house. Run to the house that has that hand in the window because they will help you there. They will love and care for you there. Right now, the LGBTQ community needs to hear from all of us as people of faith that we believe they deserve to be safe and we know that they are loved. Join me in that, will you? And if you're here in Dallas, we hope to see you here Sunday at North Haven.